Once again, welcome to uh, the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And I thank you for choosing to spend this time uh, viewing our Sunday morning worship service. And I pray that you will receive something that will help you on your journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, though there are things that are impossible to us, through your word, we know that nothing is impossible for you. Thank you for doing impossible things in and through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our subject for today is nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing is impossible for God. God can birth the impossible through our lives. Our text this morning is found in Luke uh chapter 1, verse 26 through 38, and I'm reading the English Standard Version. It reads, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed uh, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin uh, name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greetings this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, uh, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore the child will be born uh, to you will be called holy, the son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth uh, in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. Uh, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to uh, your word. And the angel departed from her. It's not impossible for God to birth something great into our lives, even in this day and age. It might be a great idea that will help future generations. Uh, the birth of Jesus was one of those impossible things that took place many years ago. Before then, at, and, during, and, and during that time, and even after the birth of Jesus was the most impossible accomplishment through all things that have been done. And even today, mankind has excelled in many areas, but throughout time, God is limitless in the things that he's able to do. And our last week I pointed out, even though we are limited, God is limited, limitless. There's nothing that's impossible for him. Uh, I got three points that I want to sh uh, share with you, and then I will be out of here, and you can get ready to enjoy your uh, Christmas uh, celebrations. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. So... The first point is, don't be surprised when God surprises you. Don't be surprised when God surprises you. Imagine Mary's surprise when the angel gave to her the assignment as Jesus' earthly mother. 2,000 years later, we are still amazed at God's choice of a young teenager to be the mother of our Savior. Wouldn't it have made more sense uh, to have selected an older woman, one more mature? Surely many other women could have uh, fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy. But God is a God of surprises. 
And he loves to take the ordinary things and ordinary people and do uh, extraordinary things with them. Think about it. Our creative God seldom does the same thing the same way twice in a row. The savior of the world was born of a quiet Palestinian uh, girl who was also a virgin, a Palestinian girl who was also a virgin. Wow. The announcement uh, to the shepherds, not to the king, that was a surprise. The birth in a manger and not in a palace, another surprise. The, the ride on a donkey and not a... Uh, on a white horse. All of those are small in comparison to a virgin bearing our savior. What chance is there that ordinary mortals could ever have imagined such a sitting uh, for the birth of God's son? There's no chance at all. So you, you feel shocked or even unbelief sets in when hearing the Bible account of the birth of Jesus. You don't, uh, if you understand that uh, our exciting and creative God uh, loves to act in fresh, new ways in the lives of his children. Nothing is so great and, 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 and profoundly that it's impossible or it's surprise. Nothing should surprise us about God because he's constantly, every morning he wakes us up. Every night he rocks us to sleep and he he's constantly breathing into it, massaging our heart and my, our causing blood to, to flow. So nothing that he does should surprise us all that much, but he still surprises us. God just blows my mind day in and day out. God had done so many things that, uh, uh, we don't uh, anticipate or even expect him to do in our lives. He who designed every snowflake differently, who makes every fingerprint unique, can hardly be expected to do any less in, when he's working. All this means is that we should keep our eyes open for a fresh new surprise from our awesome God. He loves to thrill his children. When he leads you to the unlikely and you find yourself in the midst of the unexpected, look up. Something big is just around the corner. God chose Mary not because of her education, for she apparently had little education. He didn't choose her because of her wealth because she most likely was poor. And he certainly didn't choose her because of her maturity, because she was very young. Isaiah chapter 55 verse eight says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So the Lord uh, does things in different ways from ours. His thoughts are so different from ours. He does things that we can't even imagine, even in our profoundest moments. Then God chose Mary because she trusted him enough to let him use her. How about us? Do we trust God enough to let him surprise us? You'll be glad you did if you do. He is his ways and his surprises are always filled with blessings. His ways and, 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 and his uh, surprises are always filled with blessings. Second point, absolutely nothing, and I do mean absolutely nothing, is too hard for God. Uh, a little story, I used to read uh, Charlie Brown in the comics when I was growing up, and, and there's one that I remember. Uh, one day, Linus, a uh, friend of Charlie Brown's, uh, uh, they were talking about their problems. 
And Liner said, I don't think I like to face problems head on. I think the best way to solve problems is to avoid them. And back then that made a lot of sense to me, but not now. In fact, it's a distinct philosophy of mine that no problem is so big and so complicated that it can't, uh, that, that, that I, can, I can run away from it. In other words, I don't have to run away from things that God can handle. All I have to do is what he encourages me to do, give it to him and he will work it out. Lots of us would embrace Linus's solution to the problems of our lives, but running away from problems is never the solution. Mary could have seen her situation as a problem, but she chose to see it as a promise filled with all kind of wonderful possibilities. The angel had assured her that nothing was too hard for God. And what seems hard to us, even impossible, nothing is impossible for him. People often ask uh, about life on other planets, you know, and I got this kind of scientific uh, exploratory mind. I'm always thinking about uh, what might be uh, beyond my comprehension. And, and, and that's one of those questions that I, that I often think about. Uh, is there life on other planets? And when people ask me that question, I respond that I don't believe that there is life. And then they say, well, why did God go to all that trouble to build other planets and not put life on it? And my response is simply, uh, not that that's really the way I think, but it, 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 it gets uh, people to thinking. My response is, what trouble? There's no degree of difficulties with God. There's no big thing or, uh, that's harder than for him than any small thing. In spite of, of a problem seeming difficult from our perspective, there are no degrees of difficulties from God's. Nothing is hard. Nothing is harder and nothing is hardest with him. The psalmist says, it's nothing with him, whether with the small or the great, whatever the size of the problem, whatever the difficulties that we face, remember that it is just as easy for God who makes babies with men and women a million times a day to create a baby from a woman without a man. Our problem, whether small or great, are not problems at all to God. When we are faced with personal difficulties or personal problems, we start to worry about what, what we can do and how much it will cost to solve the problem and how long it will take us to get it all to work out. We need to be reminded on a regular basis that God never frets and God never worries. There's no panic switch in heaven. Consider how big the problem of sin uh, was to God, the sins of the whole world. And then think about the amazing plan that God created to solve our predicament. The same God that arranged the stars also provided the Savior. The next time you are tempted to be discouraged by the anxieties of life, remember you have a heavenly Father who says, nothing, nothing, nada, nothing is impossible for me. That's our God. And he follows it up with, be encouraged. Third point, and I'm gone. Uh, God will stop at nothing to accomplish his will in us. God will stop, will stop at nothing to accomplish his will in us. He won't override our will because he made us uh, free moral agents, but he has a way of getting us to where we, he wants us to be. 
Mary discovered that God had a plan that was custom made for her. His plan for our lives is not automatic, but when we cooperate with his purpose, he can use us beyond our greatest imagination. For instance, did Gideon expect to go from a farmer to a fighter? Did David expect to go from a shepherd to a king? Or Paul from a prosecutor to a preacher? I don't think any of them thought about it that way. But in every case, God found someone he could work in and through to accomplish his will. A perfect savior was the only cure for an imperfect humanity. And to be the perfect and acceptable payment for our sins, uh, no human stains, no mortal flesh, flesh could be in the spiritual DNA of the Lord Jesus. The fetus is carried in the womb of the mother, but the blood is controlled by the father and the life of the flesh is in the blood. So learning that she would have birth, would give birth to, as a virgin, Mary called Jesus my God and my savior. Mary needed a savior and we needed a savior too. And she realized it. And, and, and there are those that we who have realized that we needed a savior, that we need to spend some time helping them to see that they need a savior. Don't, don't go get in somebody's face just off the bat side calling them a sin or treating them like a, they're sinners or talking to them like they're sinners, but get to know them. And if they need a savior, we know him. Mary was precious, but she was a sinner. And despite the teaching of the Roman Catholic theology, it was only Jesus, not Mary, who was miraculously conceived. The blood that gave life to our Savior flowed from the very character of God himself. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Whatever it takes to meet, meet our deepest needs, our God will surely provide. God can do what no other power can do. Jesus died and they buried him and, all, and he rose with all power in his hand. The disciples were given power after they received the Holy Spirit. And God can birth something that is impossible for us yet he can do it in us and through us. If we trust and never doubt, God will surely bring it out. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to trust you enough to submit completely to you so that you can do whatever you will in our lives and with us. Help us to be confident in your ability to do the impossible in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so 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 this is coming up to this message is coming up to uh, the Christmas message, and Christmas message will be on the 27th. Uh, and I give you a hint that the the, the the there were some men that brought gifts to the gift that God gave to us. Some men brought gifts to the gift that God gifted to us. Now, uh, even though there's a vaccine that's being distributed now and uh, uh, they're going to the healthcare organizations and those that are uh, putting their lives on the line to care for us, uh, they're getting it first. Uh, don't be afraid. There have been many vaccines that we have taken. Polio vaccine, the measles vaccine, all kinds of uh, vaccines that we have taken throughout our lives. Uh, I, I can remember when my sons were having to take shots of vaccines 
uh, it used to hurt my heart to see them with those big needles on my little sons, but it was to help them. So don't be afraid of the vaccine if you have an opportunity or when you get an opportunity to receive it. Uh, don't allow what someone that living a uh, life that is not in reality discourage you from living in life that, that is re re the reality. The reality is COVID-19 is real and it's killing people. And we need what scientists has produced, that vaccine. So don't be afraid of it. And in the meantime, keep continue to wear your mask, continue to practice social distancing and uh, wash your hands often. And just as God has brought us this far, he will see us all the way through. Take care. I love you. And I thank God for you and have a very Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.